Guys, welcome back to the Jay Hutton Show, episode 18. My guest today, if you know, if you follow me, you'll know that I've been training jiu-jitsu for the last couple of years. Uh, so I've been training a lot out of Next Gen MMA in Liverpool and the Wirral. And one of my teammates now is Paul Webb. Hey, Hi, Paul. How you doing? Nice to meet you. <laughs> Real clap. I'm saying nice to meet you. No, yeah. Paul you, is a black belt me. out of uh, Next Gen under Paul Rimmer. Um, and you've been training for a long, long time, right? Yeah, like 13 years now. I, I started training when Rim was a purple belt. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. So God, I didn't know that. Yeah, so he, so when I got my blue belt, Rim got his brown belt. And then the year after that, Rim then got his black belt. So it was like... You've been there from early days. Yeah, yeah. Well, I started in the 05 one with... Um, with everyone there. And then it was, I think me, I started first and then I think Ellis, Fent and Paddy then started like the months after me. So it was really? like, we all started within, I think it was about the same year or but you were like the year and a half. You were there yeah, before yeah. all those guys Yeah, I was, well. Well, yeah I was probably even that, like looking back now, we, but he, I think me, I think Ben Hills has probably been there a bit longer, but a bit longer than me. I think he was there. Craig was there when I started as we know, Craig Burton, he's got the mullet. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a cool, he's a cool cat, isn't he? Yeah. You know what I mean? He pulls off a mullet. And um, but yeah, Craig was there a bit longer before me. Um, but like Ben Hills, he had a bit of a he, like he was constant. I think he was just kind of getting on with his career and kind of going around the country. He, he had a bit of time off training. Yeah, but he's smashing it again now. And um, but yeah, other than that, I, I don't really know. Yeah, who else has been training longer? But yeah, so that's I've been training like thirteen years, sixteen. I started. How old are you now? Twenty nine. I know I look about. 40 bucks. <laughs> rough, rough paper round. So, yeah. I'm shit mass. How old were you when you started? 16. Well, 16? I, I was, I was 15. I was 15. I was 15, but I was like 16 in the January. I started and like the end of the December type thing. So, 16, really? I'd say. What made you get into it? Um, so I'd done, well, I was forced to do boxing from when I was 11. Basically, my mum and dad, they were on a night out and they seen like two like lads getting absolutely battered and me dad ended up helping them out um and then my mum was like i never want you to be in that position so you go into laying out the fight so me dad I, I started in 12 keys um it's over well, it's over wallacey type thing and um, that's oh god that's with mickey and jackie jackie allen's passed away now but you know rest in peace to him type yeah. thing but i was there until i was about well until i was 15 and then i moved to next gen i got into the ufc well mma type thing was yeah. me uncle Asked, told me about um oh what fight was it it was tito and liddell the second one and it was that yeah. was that was like the first fight that i ever watched now oh, was it yeah i was oh, i fell in love with it straight away it's, it's yeah. just it's a good sport yeah. i feel like it's a primal sport it's like it goes back to it's the most purest form of fighting isn't it in, in <sighs> terms of you know absolutely in terms of like no you know you take away eye gouges and all the yeah. illegal stuff it's the most purest form of like fighting. yeah 100 percent. So, but yeah no i fell in love with it then and then i found next gen just on Google. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, I just Googled it, and then it was uh, it was in Mount, yeah, Mount, Mount Pleasant. So, so are you from Liverpool? No, well, my family's from Liverpool, but me mum and dad, they couldn't afford the house over, weirdly enough, and they couldn't afford the house over here, so they moved to the Whittle when they yeah. were younger, and so I'm technically a wool. So. Oh, yeah. 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 Same. <laughs> I always get called that. <laughs> yeah. Wool. If anyone yeah. doesn't know that from Liverpool, that's and you from outside of Liverpool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, it, but the thing is, though, I've, I've got many arguments with this, though, because it takes me, from my house, it took me, like, 10 minutes to get to get over there. <laughs> but, like, Ben Peaches, he lives, like, half an hour away from the gym, and he's still classed as a, as a scouser, but I'm a wool in 10 minutes. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I, I don't it's just it. over the water, yeah, that's yeah, it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So it's interesting that you, your mum made you go and do that. Like, yeah, especially yeah. at that age, like... Like, I remember when I was younger, me and my brother, my mum and dad started us off doing karate. Fuck me, I, I just didn't like it. My brother did it till he was a black belt. I mean, it's different, different sport altogether. But <laughs> when you were younger, I, I just thought that's what, you know, fighting was. And I got I did got to my first belt, which was a yellow belt, and then called it a day. Yeah, and we carried yeah. it on. Because uh, I weren't into it. I just weren't into it. I wasn't, in, I wasn't into the boxing until I was, you know, I think you kind of fall in love with, you know, when you get four, I wasn't, when I say forced, I'll be my mum and dad kind of me every day. It was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it was like, no, you go, you go, you box and kind yeah. of learn that. And then eventually I kind of fell in love with that. And um, I'd done that for a number of years. And then when, I don't know, we, 
I think just martial arts in general. I think martial arts in general is good in any sort of way for a kid. I think I do too. Either you know, either dance, something, something with discipline. Either like dance or some sort of fighting thing. Because I just think, and especially not coming from the parents, because it's just. I just think it's better having an outside discipline. I don't know. Well, I, I could probably go into it why, but yeah. it's like kind of. I, I just feel like you need to learn that discipline and there's boundaries outside of life and, yeah. you know, mom, you know, kind of uh, immunization as well. I, I've worked with um, adolescent mental health and um, children's mental health yeah. for about a year now. And, you know, you really see a lot of people kind of who are just, you know, kind of really off. Lost. Are, off, yeah, lost. And I think some sort of discipline, some sort of fighting sport, some sort of, you know, I, I am biased to fighting because that's what I do, unfortunately. But, yeah. you know, dance, some, something with discipline, something with that gives you meaning and that makes you look into the mirror and kind of grow as a person. Yeah. I think that's really good for any sort of kid, you know. 100%. I mean? so I, yeah, but unfortunately, I don't think as kids, you know, how much would, what would you give to start jujitsu at four? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I wish I started. Like, yeah, same. Like, you look at these kids now that are in our gym, like, my brother, he, do you know RJ, the, the the little blonde one? I saw him get his blue. You give him, his yeah, blue belt, yeah, 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 yeah. Give him yeah. his blue belt, but like just, just that, like having that, having that advantage. He started when he was thirteen, and yeah. you know, oh. you you'd be looking at a black belt in your early twenties. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it's just, it's just, it's unbelievable, isn't it? To me, and then you've got all these other kids, <clears> like <throat> all these four year olds starting. Obviously, they probably don't even recognize the the weight of what they've got in the hand, or no. you know what. They what really the don't. Holds for them, but it's it's a. I just think it's good. It's good to start off with. I I totally agree, mate. Like I like I wish I'd have found this years and years ago. But you know, even then, I was a different person years ago. Not different, completely different. But you know, it was doing different things. So I don't think I'd have got into it back then. But timing's everything, I suppose. And when I do come to the gym now and I do see these kids, it's like for, for example, you know, Paul Rimmers, lad Jack, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's killing it, isn't he? I mean, yeah, how old is he? Brilliant. Yeah. I think he's like is he 11 or 12 so, yeah, something, like, say, that, like, maybe 13, something 14, about that something isn't he? Like and, that, yeah. and like you know obviously i rolled with him a few weeks ago the stuff he was doing i was like, jesus christ they're, they're brilliant they really he's are amazing it's, it's a massive advantage i think geographically as well just having next gen here we're, we're yeah. lucky aren't we do you know what i mean like yeah absolutely in terms of having um just that advantage of having rim because i like i have i've trained all over the world i've trained in um you know kind of Greece, America. Oh, have you? Yeah, yeah. Well, Texas. Um, a, a, a few. I've, I've trained in, in in quite a few places now. Wherever I go on, I, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not like traveling for jujitsu, but wherever I go on holiday, I try and find train the there. gym. And because yeah. I, I find jujitsu gyms, the it's the only place where there's no identity to you before you come into the gym. Do you know what I mean? Like you get police officers training with gangsters, nurses training with, you know, yeah. all, all sorts of, there's a whole mix of a community within a jiu-jitsu gym. And whenever I go on holiday, I always like to find the gym. Yeah. Because it's, I don't know, you. I just find you, you find your people there. You find like fun fit, like it was in Greece when I was there, that the, the um, I forget the name of the gym, but the the guy who owned the gym also owned like a few bars in town. So he ended up taking us all around his his bars, and it was it, it's just nice. I feel like you the social side of like yeah. martial arts as well is brilliant, and yeah, and I agree. but like just going back to my points in terms of rim as a, as a teacher, like where wherever I've been, I find it very hard to meet our level of training. And I find even yeah. rims. I was saying to him the other night, rims ability to be able to teach an awful lot of detail within such a short amount of time because I think that's when when it comes to jujitsu I think there's a key into the, into teaching and being yeah. able to kind of um what's the best way of kind of, of getting the point across without losing the attention of yeah of, of, of the people around you type thing yeah. so he has got an ability to do that very well and that, there's not many places where I've been the, the Dana Hard Def Squad where they are I think yeah. it's, it's the Henzos in New York that yeah. that day I think that was very near our level you know if not my everyone that i rolled with seemed to have a very good level of jujitsu a very good knowledge of it and um, the the class was brilliant uh, john danahe he taught the class yeah um and i did shake gordon ryan's hand but i didn't know who he was yeah time. really i don't know anyone in <laughs> did you roll with him no i shook his hand and he you know when someone looks at you like don't you know who i am and i was like thank you but and then when i put it up on instagram loads of people comments oh my god i can't believe you met them i was like 
fuck, I, I, I know the name, but yeah. I, I didn't know that was him. Yeah. Like, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's I, I don't know. It's just, um, it, I just think be, being on the rim, it's, it's just been a brilliant experience. It's a, it's a brilliant journey of Jiu Jitsu. He, he, he helps you grow as a person as, as well as everything yeah. else. Yeah, I think, I think, um, his level of teaching is unbelievable. Mm. Like, and it's interesting what you say, you know, about because you've got people from all different backgrounds, age groups as well, holding everyone's attention in the room yeah, and then yeah. them being able to actually learn what you're teaching, that's 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 a talent in itself. Yeah, well, you know what? There's another thing that I, I kind of always think, because I always like looking at looking at groups of, of kind of people and when you look at RIM's actual job, it's one thing teaching in the night to a bunch of people who like, you know, I've got a job, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it's, not, it's not me. But then teaching in the fight team of a bunch of men uh, and women who who were all alphas in their own right, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're all very strong-minded people. They're all, you know, I, I've had one fight myself and it was one of the most surrealist times. I mean, like, I can't even imagine what Paddy and Molly are going through in terms of the pressure that they feel. Yeah. You know, obviously they use that pressure, but it must be also horrendous and, and not many people are made to be able to take that. Yeah. Um, and just just being able to control that room of fighters, I think, is a job in itself. Just being able to yeah. kind of be the alpha of all the alphas to know yeah. that your thinking is going the right way. And yeah. it's been nice to it's been nice to grow grow up with him because I, I look at I look at him as a dad as you know as a dad as well as um, yeah. a coach because I've seen him grow. I've, you know, and he's helped me grow. He's helped me through many hard times in my life. He's yeah. not just you know you. The, how busy his life is now he, he is for everyone in there he's always got an individual relationship with them and it's, yeah. uh, it's brilliant to see yeah I really. think um, you know it's it comes down to respect as well doesn't it yeah, like everyone yeah. has got the respect there for him and and obviously rightly so as well because his knowledge of jiu-jitsu and MMA and everything is just yeah, it's, insane it's, isn't it's, it it really is brilliant and what he what he created I, I think the massive advantage of Rim is because I think in our gym there's, I think in many gyms around the country, there's trends of what that gym is and and how that gym rolls and how that gym kind of, you know, kind of competes and you get kind of people who are wrestling schools and then, and, you know, kind of people who stick to guard pulling and whatever. But I feel like in our gym, you meet a bit of everything. Yeah. Rim, I, I think Rim is really good at helping you grow into who you are and, and getting the best out of things. You know, a lot of the time he'll show you to move and then go, play around like like the the thing that we're learning now um he was like play around with it see what works for you report back to me and you know what i mean and, yeah. and that he's saying that to people across the board from black belt to white belt and, yeah. it's, and he'll listen to everyone's opinion and i think that's yeah and what, i think the good. good thing about it is, is like cuz obviously everyone's like body types and everything are different as well so certain things will work for someone better than others. Yeah, 100%. And yeah, like he'll come around and, and figure it out for you, like how, how it's going to work best for you and stuff like well, that. Me, me and Rim, we've got um, a whole system called FFD, so it's fat friendly drilling. And, it's, um, <laughs> it, and there's no there's no men and bolos, there's no, none of the rolly shit, it's all just solid shit that works. That's, that's, yeah, about that, that's the main thing. And um, <laughs> Yeah, we, we it, honestly, it's uh, it it really works, and that like we kind of whether it's approved or not, but we, you know, you're not seeing me doing any fucking Ben and Bolo. Then, <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I, like, I, I when I first started Jiu Jitsu, I, 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 you know, I came in and I pictured myself doing flying triangles and all that. It's, really, it's not happening. You know what I mean? It's, uh, I've been doing it 13 years now. I would have got one by now. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's uh, it's one of them. Yeah. But, How long ago did you get your black belt? Um. Christmas, 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 really? Yeah, I got a How Christmas. How did that style. feel? Um, because I mean, it's, I remember Matty Holmes was on here and he was saying, you know, the belt is just a byproduct of the effort you put in and, and, yeah, and to yeah. show, you know, that how well you're doing. But I think, still think, you must feel wow for all these years been doing this. Um, it's just it's a bit surreal because you don't really feel. I think you can when you. It's not until you kind of start looking back because you know, truth be told, you can go to Sports Direct now and buy a black belt. You, you know what I mean? It's not. It's not an anything special. We, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, it's it's who give you it, and I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, in recent years and jits, the more the more you kind of see the community. I think some belts have been really diluted because I, you know, I feel like with Rim. It takes a while to get graded with him because he makes sure that you are that great. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, and and sometimes that does lead to frustration in people because people do 
want something all the time. But the thing is with Rim, when you know, when you get that belt, you know you're that belt. And, yeah. and you can say that with confidence because I think a lot of people do have imposter syndrome. I, I think like I had more imposter syndrome when I was a brown belt, even being honest. Like that was, I remember um, when Chris Brennan came over, he was like Rim's coach. He came over to give Paul his, um brown belt and i never forget what he said he, he always kind of said once you're purple belt it means you're officially badass like and I, obviously he's from texas they, you know i wouldn't say badass but <laughs> um and the well, like and what what that to me that was like that was like such a big thing getting me purple belt and then yeah. i felt confident and then when i got me brown belt i had a bit like oh, am i ready for a brown belt and then i was i won some competitions at brown belt um and i felt I felt really, I felt really good, and then get me black belt. I don't know. It's just when I, when I look back, you know, it's it's more kind of it's quite sad because you make so many mates over the years, and the blue belt case is so real. You know what I mean? That the the so so many people who are like, oh, it's never happened to me, and then and then they get the blue belt, and a week later they're gone. It's it's, it's mad, uh, that isn't it? It's mad. I think I think it must be a relief because I think it takes so long to get. Like the thing is with jits, it's. Um, it really does make you look into the mirror, but not just look into the mirror in terms of this is what I am. It makes you look into the mirror and go into the your vulnerable bits because if you want to get better, yeah, you have to be vulnerable. There's, and it's one thing that I like about jits is that when when you go in, someone can go into a boxing gym and throw a punch and they can be quite good. And I'm, I'm not in any way disrespecting boxing. No, yeah. what I'm saying is, mean, is no. that there's people who are hard and who, who can just throw a good punch. You know yeah. what I mean? People with massive hands or whatever. Yeah. Um, but in in jits, there's you can be a professional athlete and come in and get done in by some dad of three who works in you know as a mechanic type yeah. thing who does it three times a week because <clears throat> jiu jitsu is that hard and that different. It really, if you want to get good at it, you have to fall in love with it. You have to look in the mirror and you have to really grow as a person and be be vulnerable. You find out who you are on the mat. And I also think that's why people quit because people find out who, who they are and, yeah. and whether they can, whether they want to expand that person or whether they want to run away from it. That's, you know, that's up yeah, to them. Yeah, it's mad it? that, isn't it? Like I couldn't imagine not training jits now. No, it, well, it's integrated in, into like my life. And I've got to be honest, like with the, when the pandemic happened, like I didn't train for 18 months. Yeah. Um, I got a kettlebell, I pulled me back out and I never trained again. I just walked the dog. So because I, I, like, honestly, I fucking, I've always hated, like I've started doing the weights now and I've got to be honest, like for 13 years I've slagged doing the weights off. Like, really? I, I, I hate the culture of it, the everything. My dad's like kind of into bodybuilding as well. So yeah. I think it is kind of pressure on that. So I was like, I, I just can't be honest with the culture of it. And now I've yeah. started it. It's, it's changed my whole game in jujitsu again. So, really? In what way? Just since being a since being a black belt, I kind of I, I really relied on kind of one system, and then I was uh, Rim actually said something to Walesy when we were rolling. He was like, "Just stand up, Paul won't take you back." And I was like, "I actually wouldn't take you back. You could just stand." You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, "Fuck! I need to. I'm a black belt. I need. I should be taking people's back." Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, so I so like I kind of started working on it, but then at the same time, I'm doing. Um, I'm doing a, a tournament, not a tournament, but I'm doing like a, I'm on like a, a grappling show. Oh, really? I forget the name. I, I should really mention the <laughs> name, shouldn't I? Do you mind if I get my phone? I'll no, just check the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so I, I did make sure. I was like, how oh, I mention you. Yeah. Um, fucking <laughs> so for that. Right. I'm on powerhouse grappling events in September. Oh, nice. So I, I found that out about, um, about three months ago so i was like i've got like quite a bit of time to prepare so i was like i started doing the weights yeah with uh walesy and you know what it's completely changed my game i feel like my body keeps up with my mind now and um, yeah it's been a real benefit and like i take back what i say but it's, you know the culture can still you know kind of but we're changing the culture we're, we're bringing jits into the culture of weight so it's good yeah but yeah it's um i don't know it's 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 fun. Where were we up to then? Sorry. You, yeah, well, you were just saying about saying that, you know, you've been doing the weights because it's helping you jujitsu and Paul was like, you'll never take his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so now I've been working on kind of taking the back and kind of just expanding myself and just seeing where I can expand to from, um, from with a black belt as well. I feel like, you know, when you look at all the kind of the greats, um, like Gordon Ryan, he, like he always kind of talks about from black belt. And I feel like everyone kind of talks about kind of your journey starts again when she gets a black belt. And I do 
I do agree with that as well. I've kind of really reassessed my game. I'm I'm working a lot on wrestling up now. Yeah. Um, because I I don't like pulling guard. I think lockdowns lockdowns really good to kind of get back up with. But then now I'm I'm working on kind of wrestling up and kind of taking them down from there. Yeah. Which has been brilliant and kind of working on uh, back takes as well. Which yeah. I, I'm, I'm it's just it refreshes the game for yeah. you. You know what I mean. It refreshes your game and it adds more tools to your arsenal. So yeah. it's, uh, it's good. It's mad that like it feels like it never ends. Jiu Jitsu does it? Like no, it's no. mad. Like even it, like 13, 14 years on, like now you're, you're still learning new things. Oh, well, you the, think? the cycles, like it, and it goes through, and like you see things come, come back around. Like Chris Thompson, um, like you know the guy who does uh, Grapple Fest, right? Yeah. So he he put a post up saying about kind of how he sees kind of like a cycle of of moves kind of go through, and I think that it really is true. Like since I've started, like obviously you've got your the fundamental of moves that will always work. You can more your triangles, your you know your head and arms and um stuff like that. But then I think in recent years it's been massive on um footlocks and yeah. you know heel hooks, which it, yeah. I think is brilliant and I think is really good. But I'd I'd really hate when I see people in like the lower ranks. No, I don't hate it, but I just don't I don't see how that's beneficial do, doing footlocks where if you can't pass guard, I, I feel like footlock should be kind of either your main game, like from starting up. But if you can't pass guard or do other stuff like that, what are you going to do when someone passes you? You know, you need to yeah, you need to be able to escape shift before you start going into the game or the world of footlocks. And it, and I think it, it's a game in itself. Footlocks, it's yeah, a, it's a pain in the ass rolling people who do footlocks. You've got to you really use your weight, really be careful because it's it's all the time type thing. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, you, you do see these, like over the years, you see these cycles and you see kind of things. Like at the minute, I feel like there's a trend in MMA where uh, I, I think Rims really took advantage of it because you see all those fighters on Cage Warriors or, you know, UFC. Mm -hmm. They all finish with uh, rear naked chokes, a lot of them. And a lot of the time, you people are against the cage and then the back's always available to, to be took. And for whatever reason, that trend's just coming at the minute and yeah. it's, it's all over the place. And you'll see something else change like calf kicks in the UFC and things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I, I don't know. It's, it's just a, it, it, it is, it, it, it's, it's mad because it, it's just a continuous umbrella that keeps on getting bigger and bigger. And I think yeah. the more people or the more mainstream it becomes, the more athletes you see coming out and then you see more creative people. Yeah. Um, dedicate the time to it. Like look at, um, John Danaher type thing. Like he was a very intelligent man in his own right. Yeah, he did like philosophy. Yeah, stuff, yeah. He? Do you know what I mean? So he, he I think, I think he was a, a doctor or a professor. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I'm not too sure on that. But he was something very. Uh, but him putting them that kind of intelligence into the passion of jujitsu. Yeah. That's where you get that, and that's when a, you know when you see people like Rim. I think Rim's very, very highly intelligent when it yeah. comes to jujitsu and, and things like that. But it's nice because the more mainstream it becomes, the more popular it's going to be. The more creative people are going to yeah. be involved and. The better it's going to be, and I think it's just the natural progression of of the sport. If, yeah. I'm, if I'm being honest, it is mad that once you get into the that world, you get sucked in, don't you? And it does make you. I've talked about this before. Um, you know, with Matty and stuff. You know, a lot of people, you know, think they can <coughs> can have a go until you walk into these gyms, like MMA yeah. gyms or Jiu Jitsu gyms, and like you know, I've seen it myself. Like people walk in who, you know, previously you've thought. Of, outside are going to be quite tough then come into a jiu-jitsu gym and get absolutely battered yeah, by, by yeah, some skinny it's, kid it, you think, it, it's killed your ego that yeah it's it's, <laughs> it's funny it's, it's funny when that happened and, and it happened an awful lot because i think you know people have got perceptions of themselves which aren't i don't think any you know i think everyone's kind of got this idea of what a fight is and mm. actually it's fucking terrifying I, I hate the idea of fighting like when i see fights in town or whatever it's like i get my people and just be like we're staying here yeah um, stay it, away from it well you know to, to you know uh, it's a terrifying ordeal and you get these people who, who are very hard and they come into a gym and they get showing and then they disappear they get humbled a bit i suppose but yeah it, it's like even then people it's like um there's a there's a guy uh, i don't know him personally but he was from around ours his name's jacob smith but when we were younger he was known as a very hard man but however though now he's in one championships doing Muay Thai. So it's 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 really nice on the other on the other side of that to see these hard guys actually put put it into a passion yeah. and then one championships pay very good money. So it's it's really yeah. nice to see that. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's yeah. um it, it is it's nice to see that people people get 
I think his name Jacob. Yeah, Jacob Smith's his name is, but it, it's nice to see people get that. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Get that recognition. I I, I think it, the great thing about it is, no matter who you are, it kills your ego. Yeah, 100%. and like, but then from that, you make the decision whether you're going to continue to go, and then you say be vulnerable. Yeah, because yeah. you are going to get battered a million times. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it takes. <laughs> it's it, like I remember, um, God, when I started I, I used to get submitted about five times around yeah yeah b- 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 billy mcleod like I, I don't get triangled any well I, I have been back trying the last few months <laughs> being wales got me but it, it is what it is but I, I very rarely get triangled and i do believe that's because i spent about two years in as partnered with billy yeah getting triangled every night and yeah. it, it teaches you you know what i mean but you have to to grow you have to accept this vulnerability it, it, you know and and that, that, that's why i compared well, I compare a lot of um, jits to kind of my job in mental health because we, yeah. it's a journey rather than rather than I'm training this, I'm doing this, and you, you see you, your gains. You see when you're getting the edge on people when you and that it takes so much time because especially when you've got people around you training the exact same time, yeah. and also as well with jits, it's um, it, the problem is you can't get good at it doing it once a week. It, 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 it's, it's true, it, yeah, and and. and it's it is terrible saying that, but you I think at the least amount of time you should be training between three and four times a week if you're really into it. And even then you you've got people like I remember Rim was talking about um Nicky oh you know Gordon Ryan's brother. I yeah, yeah, his brother, but he trains eight hours a day. And it's like who's getting you know, who you can get that he, he does yeah. what I do in two weeks and one day, do you know what I mean? So it's, mental, it's isn't it? when, when you've got that math time and you've got you can get that math time, it's amazing and yeah, you can kind of treat it as your your job. But yeah, unfortunately that's not the no. same thing for everyone. But it is it's very humble and it makes you look at yourself and it makes you expand. But it's also I don't know many people who have started JITS and it's not had a positive impact on no. their life. It, it's fantastic in terms of I don't of your, see how it could. Yeah, well, as I say, before I got a bit off track, sorry, but right. going back to the pandemic, I didn't train for 18 months. Yeah. And not training, like, my anxiety was all over the place. My stress levels were all over the place. Me, just everything, me, me, me weight was up and down. I was very, I, was, I felt like, um, I don't know, you know, when your skin goes a bit, like, weird. I just felt unhealthy yeah. type thing. And I yeah. felt like them 18 months, it was just work and home, work and home. And, and but I'd, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't be in work telling people to stay away from each other and then go into the gym to, you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's just not, it, it's not something that you, that you can do type thing, but it, it, it is what it is. And I've, um, I enjoyed getting back into it. It was a bit of a challenge to get back into it because I think your cardio is shit. Yeah. You saw it again all over the time, all, all again. And it's, um, yeah, but it's also, it made me realize how much therapy it is for me and how much kind of I needed to just kind of balance help me, you know what I yeah. mean? To kind of get that just normality again type yeah. thing I, I, I couldn't agree with you more to be mm. honest mate and it's interesting that because obviously you work in high secure services yeah, with mental yeah, health yeah. as well yeah. don't you so yeah. talk to me about that um, well I'm a mental health nurse I've qualified in 2018 um, but I've had I've had quite a few jobs um, since then so I, st- I started in high secure services I was there for um, just over two years um, and then I moved to the community. Yeah. Um, I worked in the community um, as a as a nurse there type thing. And then uh, the last year I've been working with um, in CAMS in in, ch- in children and child and adolescent mental health. I always really? struggle to say. That, How would you find it? Um, I really, it's fun to be honest. I Is think it? I think as a career, it's really fun. It's really challenging. I was going to say it must yeah. be challenging. Yeah, it's 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 really cha- it's it's really challenging, and and it's um it's sad, frustrating, all at the same time because you know you're dealing with these people who, um, they, you know, they, they've been through some horrendous times in their life, and 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 you know, it, it a lot of the time, even from the get go of being born, it, they've they've had a struggle. You know, yeah. just just the, just the cards that they've been played, and 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 don't get me wrong, these people are you know the the are really resilient people and and yeah brilliant people but you know it's um it is brilliant to see people live a normal life as well to a to a certain point you know you you, you know you be in the path help helping someone get back to kind of that thing that we call sorry um okay. normality yeah um it, it, it's brilliant it, it's also a, it's a very rewarding job as well i was gonna say yeah it must be rewarding did you say you work with children as well yeah 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 I, i've let i'm 
I've left that now and I'm going back to high secure services. Yeah. I've, I've got clinical lead um, there. So, um, but I'll, but I, I worked with, I worked with them for a year. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. And that, was, and that, you know, that was, you know, that was really, it was, you see a lot of sad things and, you know, but at the same time, you also realize how resilient kids are. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and I think as well, you know, a lot of the time you, you reassure, uh, you know, sometimes with support for parents as well. And, because I think sometimes when children, you know, children can be, you know, be mental in, in the, in that job, he, we were talking about kind of, um, the, you know, what parenthood is, whether it's like, is it, is it a, can you, can you really be the best parent you can, or is it, and parenting is, or is parenting just complete luck? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, you can, you can do everything you can you can write as a parent, you can, you know, validate them, listen to them, bring them up right with boundaries and everything perfect. you got a little girl and at the age of 14, she meets some knobhead and then within a year, she's buddy trying to commit suicide and, and got all these wrong coping yeah. mechanisms. And you, it really is parenting's really, really hard to just, just as a, as a general kind of yeah. thing. So I, a lot of the time we were reassurance for parents there as well. And, yeah. and, and, and it is. It's a hard, hard. It's it's very hard for I'm people. Gonna say it's very interesting that you know, it's true. You know, you can you could give someone the best upbringing, and by letting someone maybe toxic or someone who else has had the who's is not right mentally and has been through maybe some bad stuff, they bring their baggage and put it onto the per, yeah, the other yeah, yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. And, all sorts of problems can go wrong, and then it's not a, it's not down to you as a parent that that, that goes that's wrong, I mean. is it? And, and it must be and it must be so hard for that parent to kind of watch because also as well, I'm pretty sure you know I've had my fair share of issues in my life that I've mm. dealt with, it, you know, and I'm pretty sure you have as well. Yeah. We've all gone through that, but as a parent, you know, you get a lot of parents like, no, I don't want my child to experience that. How do I stop it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes it's just that reassurance to be like, no, you just got to be there type thing. And you've yeah. got to kind of put them boundaries into place. You, yeah. You, you, you can't control everything. You know what I mean? But That's it, it, isn't it? It is. It's a, it's a, it's a challenge. And especially when young ones go through mental health challenges, the, the, it usually comes with a, a barrage of kind of social issues as well. Yeah. Um, and it's a, and, and, and a lot of the time, but, but the good thing is there's a lot of support in place for it now. You yeah. know, there's, we kind of access therapy for young ones as well, kind of, we, we kind of deal, I was in the crisis team. So, um, we would, um, kind of deal with the crisis and then kind of refer it on to either therapy or into like cams where they would get a mental health practitioner. Yeah. And we would deal with kind of the issue, make sure that they're safe, make sure that the safety plan and around things and, um, just basically kind of make sure that the parents know as well, call us, we're, we're here 24 seven, you know what I mean? That's what we're here for. We're here to support you, make sure you're making the right decisions as parents as well. Must be, you know, nice for the parents to know that they've got some support as yeah, well because yeah. I suppose I, they, they yeah. could end up feeling a bit lost themselves. And really, I think a lot of the time people don't really, uh, you know, kind of going back to kind of Paddy's point of, of people not talking, um, people don't like talking in this country uh, for whatever reason, it's a culture that, kind of has been with us for such a long time, especially in men. Um, you know, the, the suicide rates in men is horrendous. It's so high, especially I think under 45, it's really high. Yeah. Um, I think last time I checked, it was something like 14 to every 100,000 in the UK, which is ridiculously high. Really? Um, and so it might even be higher than that now, so I'm sorry if I'm wrong on yeah. that. Yeah. Um, deaths per 100,000. Really? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? But it's 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 just sad that, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like you know That's when scary. you when you work out pay a hundred thousand when you say pay you know when you say eleven you're like oh it's not too bad but then when you work out how many hundred thousands there is in this country yeah there's a, it's quite sad and 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 the thing is all you know all suicides in my opinion are preventable like no one suicide's this really kind of complex thing no one really knows exactly where it comes from there's loads of different factors to it yeah and it's usual usually kind of like a a stack of multiple factors which kind of cause this person to completely lose hope and and then obviously you know kind of really really struggle to kind of get back and sometimes they do you know they do kind of really hurt themselves and luckily luckily enough though there is support out there and, and i think yeah. that's why you know, just coming onto this show, talking what Paddy's did, what Paddy done the other night. Yeah. You know, that that kind of sparked. Was mental, it. Wasn't it? it was incredible. Well, it, that it was. I think what 
the thing is, in the at the minute, the world's on fire. You, you could talk about any subject you want, and there'll be a million sob stories to go with it. Everyone yeah. is suffering in some way, um, and I think what really kind of helped as as a health professional myself, you kind of see people. You know, you see people now these days. I've seen like mental health sessions offered on windows of hairdressers and for thirty quid, and it's like that's dangerous if you're just a, you know what I mean? If, you, if just you're someone trying to give advice. Yeah, yeah. If you're just someone who's offering mental health sessions, if, if you get someone who's really at risk of hurting others or hurting yourself, hurting themselves, it's a dangerous game to play that because if you haven't got the access to give them the support that they need, it's, yeah. you know, it's... Um, you're playing with fire, aren't you? Yeah, you really are. And and so I think as, you know, just going back to Paddy, they quit, I think people kind of took to that so well because it, even even myself because usually as a professional you you, you do see stuff and you think oh, you know and don't, I'm, I'm not against anyone trying to make money i'm just saying no, 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 it's a course, very yeah. dangerous game to play but him it was a very personal emotion to him you see how personal it was and i think that really when people see that and when people see how um how much suicide affects other people um people realize oh wait there people do want to help people do want to help me people and and it might what it can spark off is hope and i and yeah and that's the best thing you can spark off and anyone is hope. Yeah. like in my job when i go and see a patient you know i can give you all the books and all the kind of science to it and everything but my job if you if i'm describing it very um shortly is my job's to find the spark of hope and yeah. that's what that's why I try and do every time I see a patient. So usually, yeah. being in being in a crisis team, you you know you deal with people who are suicide who, who have made suicidal intent or have acted on suicide at some point. Yeah. Um. So you know, you're dealing with them type of people, and and you really try to basically find that hope. And then and I think people seeing what Paddy done there, seeing because a, a lot of people talk about suicide in terms of um, what's the best way to describe it? Like a lot of people talk about. Suicide, like oh, it's um, it's such a coward's way out or this or that. It's bullshit. Like because when you look at suicide, what it, you go against every natural emotion that you you know when yeah. I you know when you bloody hear yourself on I don't know you burn yourself on a cooker or whatever you're like oh fucking hell you're the worst pain in the world. But yeah. then this person's so you know mentally unwell at the time when they decide to do that then there's yeah. feelings that they don't care about other, it's not that they don't care about other people's they're not thinking about they're not that. thinking about they're not in that right state no. of mind and that's where you know it's a it's very important that when 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 stuff like that happens if we can just communicate like the one yeah. thing that i'll always promote in every which way is communication communication and communication because it's just it if we know about something, if I know about something, yeah. I'll put it this way: if I know that someone's suicidal, I would, and I'm going to see them. I wouldn't let them die because I'd, I'm going to put something in place to make sure that they're safeguarded and make sure that they're safe or escalated to a certain point where we can put things in place to make sure this person is safe. Or I wouldn't leave them. Simple yeah. as. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If if I if I meet someone and I truly do believe there's evidence to suggest that that person's suicidal, I would always you know make sure and i think that's very important to kind of get across and make sure people know that people are here to help type thing it's yeah um, it, but it, it, it you know and you know it is it's a, it's a sad game that we play but at the same time it's a it's a brilliant job as well and you get to see people you know on the other side of that you get to see people come out and, and get back to the normal lives you yeah. get to see pe- you know in, in my i think over the last you know since the pandemic there's been an awful lot about kind of side effects and medications and people not wanting medications. And um, a lot of the time when we, when, when you kind of look at people who are um, kind of saying all this and very against medications, I, I, some ways I agree with them. I think mental health medications that do come with a barrage of side effects and, and some, some are quite heavy. So that's why when, when you take, mental health medication especially when we're going um you know down the route of antipsychotics it's very important that you you're doing it through a doctor you're doing it for yeah. a, a consultant psychiatrist because they know you know the, those people that you know I'm, I'm a nurse but those people are the levels of intelligence it's 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 ridiculous and the very caring people and they they know how to how to tackle mental health with, yeah. with medication and um, when it comes to like antidepressants type thing a lot of people say, you know, how much they don't work and how, you know, and a lot of my patients describe 
antidepressants is just making them numb, which... Really? In, yeah, yeah, which in some ways sounds really shit. To me, it sounds like, oh, God, I hate to just feel numb. You don't feel... Now, you don't feel sad anymore, but you also don't feel anything else as well, which yeah. is also horrendous. It's like a prison in itself. Yeah. And when you look at... um. That, that's where I kind of come in and kind of, you know, kind of say, you know, sometimes people say they're overprescribed, but I just think when 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 you go to a doctor, you, you've got to remember what you're putting, what you're saying to that doctor. And when you're saying to that doctor certain risks or certain um, how you're feeling, if you meet the criteria for antidepressants, they're going to have to offer you them because they've, if you go, if they go, if they give you a pep talk and then say, no, see you later, you know, I have antidepressants, you go home and something really bad happens, then, then it's, they have to explain to a judge, jury and your family why they didn't do their job, basically. So, yeah, it, yeah in some ways they are, um, in some ways they are overprescribed, but I think also as well, people in this country, we do, we leave everything to the last minute. We we don't like talking about stuff. And then no. when it's too much, they're okay, now we're going to access help. So I always try and prompt people, um, if, you know, if you're kind of going through these mental health stresses, start with your sleep. If you can fix your sleep, if you get in between, if anybody kind of is in, interested in a, a guy called Matthew Walker, he was on Joe Rogan. Yeah. He absolutely terrified me with the, uh, the stuff that he spoke about sleep. It's, it's worth a listen, but... He, you know, he kind of advises between seven and nine hours a night. And that, you know, that's the start of um, brilliant mental health well-being and physical health well-being. Really? You, you, once you start there. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, when I talk to a lot of people, you were going through mental health stresses or mental health, it, it, I usually start with the sleep. And nine times out of ten, they say, oh, it's terrible. I get to sleep at three o'clock and I'm awake by six. You know what I mean? And your body just can't function without no. sleep. You know what I mean? You know, you know, going back to jits, how much rest is important when you're yeah. not resting properly. It's really hard yeah. to kind of you get drained and depleted. Yeah. Don't yeah. You? yeah. Um, but yeah, just kind of going back to kind of medication. I always advise people to kind of let's, you know, you, you check the risk, you kind of, you, you see if you can kind of, if you've lived a life where, if you've lived a life where, okay, you, you, you're saying that you're depressed, you feel depressed, but also you don't like your job, you hate your family, you hate your family life, you, you're in a shit situation, you've got a shite social circle, the chances are you feel depressed, but that doesn't mean that you're depressed, that doesn't mean that antidepressants are going to be the number one answer. No. If you start off by changing all that shit, then you might start feeling a bit better, yeah. and, and then you might not even need to access kind yeah. of mental health medication, but then yeah. when we look at people who do access, um, and, and my idea of an antidepressant is when people do go on them, it should be a plan because people do can get stuck on antidepressants. People mm. can be on them for years. Relying on them. Yeah, and, and and the way I see it, an antidepressant is a tool in the toolkit, not not the be all and end all. And yeah. I think people get confused with the name because when we say antibiotic, you, you've got a bad chest, you go to the doctors, you get an antibiotic, you're like, within four days your chest has cleared up hasn't it? you know what i mean yeah. but when you say antidepressant you think right i'm going to be antidepressant now but in reality those are tools to stop you having these horrible horrible thoughts and yeah. they're really good at making you when you're suicidal and you know knowing people are so anxious they can't concentrate you know and yeah. you think they're, they're constantly thinking of suicide mm. having that break uh, having that numbness is a good thing the, yeah. the body can rest you can actually get some sleep you can actually um, when, when you when you're in a bad place mentally, it's it's very hard to achieve anything, and and yeah, and that's why help's always good to have. You yeah, know, being able to access help is brilliant, and yeah, um, and just stuff like that. But it, also as well, the culture uh, of mental health is uh, well, it's it's still years away. But you know, when we when we look at mental health as a whole, it's still very new in a sense, in, in, compared to the the rest of the health system because when you look back just into the 90s the asylums were still open and the asylums yeah. what happened there it's crazy what they used to put people uh, in yeah, the asylum it, for it, isn't it, it honestly like, it's it's mad if you you know uh, uh, people who actually weren't mental yeah yeah it, like but you they know, just considered them when they had things like dementia and stuff and they yeah that's what i mean and, and the thing is it's not you know they're not it's not a nice, it, it's the, the way nice places. I've never been to one myself no. personally, but it, you know, it, they're not nice places, the story, but it's still very close to our time. It's yeah. not like, you know, with some of the ago, stories really. that you hear, you're like, oh my God, was this in like the 1800s? No, yeah. it was only in the, in the fucking fifties. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you really do get shocked, but I feel like our culture's changed because I feel like from the pandemic, a lot of people are very anti-medication now and a lot of um, kind of, 
anti everything. But you in in mental health now, we're, we're there's a lot of studies going on about. I think it's called psilocybin, right. which is um, it comes from mushroom. So oh, it, psilocybin. Uh, psilocybin. There we go. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I, I've read the study, and um, basically that's achieving the same level of um, success as an antidepressant. Yeah. But what's more impressive about that in my, but when I read the study, obviously, and this is very early days, so, you know, obviously not, a, and I'm not promoting everyone to go and get psilocybin, I'm saying talk to a doctor and all that. This yeah. Is, it's not going to be prescribed for many years because it's still yeah. doing all the research. But what was really, I thought what was really motivating, um, as a 29-year-old lad with lots of mates and being a mental health nurse, people do often talk to you and people do often tell you, you know, the kind of the, what goes on when they take the medication and antidepressants come with a, a barrage of side effects. So mm. if they're not beneficial to your mental health, I wouldn't be on them. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And if you're, I don't know, if you're a 24 year old lad and you've been on antidepressants for six months, one of the side effects is that, you know, um, sometimes people can't get erections from it or, mm. or can't achieve orgasm. So when you, if you just meet a, a girlfriend or a partner, yeah, guess what? You're going to go fuck off with your antidepressants. But the problem is when you, and a lot of people don't know this, when you stop taking antidepressants like that, your mental health, if you imagine when you're on antidepressants, it's slowly coming up, your mental health just goes like that. Yeah, I was going to say, it's yeah. like a going cold turkey. Yeah, it's called, it's called rebound depression and it's, and it's, it's very dangerous. It's very risky. Um, so you have to be weaned off it. Yeah, basically you've got to, yeah. you're through a doctor and even then, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, you know, I, I, all I kind of try and promote is kind of, if you are thinking about coming off, off them, always go and talk, talk to a doctor and always kind of um, working out with your doctor and, you know, and if you're not happy on them, if you are having side effects, there's plenty of antidepressants that, and and the thing is with, anti, uh, with mental health medication, what works for me won't work for you and what works for you won't work for you. You know what yeah. I mean? It's a very, it's trial and error, a lot of mental health. Yeah. Um, People like a quick fix, don't they? That's the well, thing. It's our it? society, and and mental health to me is a journey. Like to me, I think when someone starts antidepressants, there should be a program where you access a therapy about six months after, because at the end of the day, you can put a band aid on it with an antidepressant and make the feelings go away. But as soon as you take that band aid off, the feelings come back. If you're still in the same social situation, yeah, you're still in the same mindset and stuff like that, yeah. And the thing is, a lot of people, especially a lot of men, a lot of me mates, they always talk about um, kind of how therapy doesn't work for them. There's a load of shit that therapy doesn't work for me. I've tried it. Just because you're not in the right place for it. Therapy is a fucking hard thing. Like, you've got to look in the mirror and change you, which is one of the hardest things to do. And especially when you're coming from a very vulnerable place, being either under a very um, harsh mental stress or mm. a mental illness. Therapy takes a long time to get into. And also you've got to put a lot of trust in this person that's sitting across the room from you. Yeah. And you've got to be very open. So anyone that is doing therapy, like, you know, always keep going. And I take my hat off to you because it is, it's a, it's a hard, hard time for that person. But the good thing is I know a hell of a lot of people um, who have come out the other end of it and it's been really beneficial for them. And, and yeah. you know, now, you know, the either living, you know, to a point with the mental illness where it's they can live alongside the symptoms or yeah. they've changed life completely and it's and it's and it really is brilliant but yeah our, our society we love a quick fix when we want you know you order something off amazon prime now be it tomorrow yeah do you know what i mean and and in many parts of our lives we are getting that kind of thing but in yeah in mental health unfortunately it's a journey and it takes a long long time yeah well because and what you probably find is it's probably took a long, long time to get there. It's just, you don't realize that your life, you know, little things happen. It might be, you know, one month, you know, some people, you know, p people who self-harm, for example, um, and self-harm, and it's a very personal thing. Uh, you know, we never, never promote it, but a lot of people always, a lot of people use self-harm as a coping mechanism. Um, and someone who started self-harm and might of a year ago, nicked themselves when a bad situation happened and he felt a bit of relief from it to then a year and a half later they're cutting themselves several times a day and yeah. that's how without accessing that that's took a year and a half to get there so it's you know it's still a long time but yeah. you probably haven't recognized it because you you're mm. going through this horrible situation day yeah. after day after day and and the only coping mechanism you got is is hating yourself which yeah, is, it's it, mad, which is sad it? it's very sad and you know what you've got a, i think a lot of people one of the first, I don't know if you'd agree with this, but one of the first things I would naturally suggest is look at your surroundings and who you're, who you're around and spend the most of your time with. 
because I think, you know, a lot of people get caught up in the cycle of whatever their life circumstances are, which can be detrimental to their own yeah, mental well being. And if, you know, if you're like, it's funny, actually, there's a saying, isn't there? If you surround yourself with five millionaires, you'll be the six. If you surround yourself with five idiots, you'll be the six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's quite typical that, you know, who are you yeah. spending the majority of your time with? You know, look at your surroundings. It's even little things that that, uh, that change your mindset a lot. You know, I, if you can feel of if you walk into a room and it's dark and it's dingy, it makes you feel oh. But if you walk into a room that's bright and it's pleasant, that changes your feeling. Little things, the tiny little things. But you know, if you were living, it's hard for people. You know, who live in terrible circumstances, and I think most of it is that they don't they don't really know how to change it. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's 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 a really hard, and a lot of people, you know, I'm sat here saying, change your life, get some sleep. You're a mother with a newborn baby, you you're not getting sleep. You know no. what I mean? It's 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 one of them things. But the one, you know, it's about changing little by little. Do you know what yeah. I mean? What you can change, change, and yeah. and if it can benefit, yeah. I just I think a lot of people, when we talk about mental health, I think there's a lot more things that are social stresses rather than mm. direct mental health that are coming from like an actual illness. Do you know what I mean? I think, um, and I think a lot of people are kind of stuck in this, you know, in a, social media is another thing. <laughs> Everyone's living the most perfect life on social media. And, you know, if you're in a really bad place and you're looking at that and you're like, fucking hell, I wish I was there or I wish mm. I was doing that. And then when in reality, that person's really sad because they only got X amount of likes or, you know, and, and, and it's, it's sad, just, a, it? it's, yeah, it's a sad wheel. And, and I feel like, you know, a lot of the time, I feel like it, 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 since the pandemic, it, the, the pandemic, it's caused a massive crisis within young people because young people have been told to sit on your ass, have a game of Fortnite, and then you've got to go to school for a few hours in the day on online, which is a bit of a laugh, but overall you can do what you want. Yeah. And now we've got to go back to normal life where you've got to go to bed on time. You've got to be in school for nine it's, it's it's created this massive crisis within young people. The panda, and I'm not saying I'm I'm not one of them people who are against. It. I I understand the pandemic. Oh no, yeah. yeah. The, the pandemic was really, really a hard time, and a lot of people that you know what I mean. It, yeah. it was a sad time for. But and we had. Don't get me wrong. I don't think our leadership was great. No, it however, wasn't. However, though, you know they were all doing coke in the toilet to number 10 why we have to we have to not not enjoy our christmas but you know exactly yeah who am I, I? I could go yeah. on about that for a while <laughs> yeah um <laughs> and uh, but at the same time it's um it's it's sad to see but it's nice to see normal life get back on track a, a track to a point now i yeah. just feel but a lot of people are turning to a lot of people are climbing up mountains now jumping in the sea yeah and i think that's all coping mechanisms coping mechanisms that, yeah. we're, that we're creating for ourselves to help to help live in this world. One thing people can take out of the pandemic is that it did, I mean, there's a lot of people that maybe in this culture is like, they like to go out every weekend, get bladdered and yeah, binge yeah. drink and it's every, you know, three, four nights a week, go out and do that. And I think a lot of people realise they don't actually have to go out to have a good time. To have a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, one thing it did do is make you spend time with quality people that you want to be around. Yeah, like obviously yeah. when you could have certain amount of people in the bubble and how many you could have stood in your fucking front garden or whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you've real, a lot of people have realized that's one of maybe the positives that's taken out of it where, you know, you, you can, you can enjoy yourself with the people you surround yourself with who you actually care about and care about you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, when I think it, it's just, it was such an unusual time and I think we're in a time, you know, the, the, the world really is on fire. You know what I mean? You look at, you look at, kind of Russia situation with the yeah. Ukraine. It, it's such a horrible situation and, and, and there's so many kind of repeats of history that we're seeing. And, and I do believe that this time in our lives will all be, we'll all be looked back on, on history. We are going yeah, through that time. 100%. Um, and it's been, it's been hard on a hell of a lot of people. Yeah. It really has. So it, yeah. it, it, it's, it's good to see us coming out the back of it um, and seeing us get a bit of normality. But I think it's, it, it is brilliant seeing people recognize that it's not just about, because I've got to be honest when, when I go out now, I'd like, I'm with me mates, I'm kind of, I can't hear you. It's like, can we, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's fucking, you're trying to have a catch up, but you can't fucking hear. Not, it's, <laughs> it's quite shy. It's shite now. I don't know whether it's just me getting old, but it's, it, is, it is what it is. And, you know, I I've feel got, like I'm the same, mate. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm only 32, but sometimes I think, I've been out sometimes, I think, wow, I feel way older, like being yeah, out now. Yeah, it's like, it's <laughs> scary. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's mad. It's, it really is. Yeah, man, it's crazy. But, um, mate, thanks so much for coming on. And, no, thank and talk, you. Especially all the things you talked about. They touched on some really important subjects there. 
Um, I think people watching, especially coming from yourself, work, working in the industry that you do, will take a lot from it. Yeah, no, I really, Hearing I really it from enjoy people, that. You know, I find that I always say things like, you know, you wouldn't go to a PT who was out of shape and, and letting tell you how to be getting in shape. It's, it comes from, you have to listen to people that you trust. Yeah, And yeah. In, working in the industry, you're doing the things you're talking about, and there's a lot of people listen to you, and, and, and you know, it'll take a lot from what you've said today mm. Well, I, what you do. I think as well, I think what's good about having a nurse on is that like a lot of the the average person probably hasn't met a nurse, uh, yeah. a mental health nurse anyway, because we 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 usually come in once people get referred. We're secondary services. Uh, yeah. GPs are now having mental health practitioners in their yeah. services, which is brilliant. Um, but also as well, I just think it's good. You know, any anything talking about mental health, where, yeah. whether one person decides to pick up a phone or whatever now yeah it's brilliant I'll be that's happy the with thing it. is you know you don't understand you you know you don't understand how many people watch it and even if like you said one person picks one up bit, yeah you know what I mean you know, and it helps it helps so um yeah mate thanks so much for coming oh, on thank talking you. And thank you I'll see you in the gym yeah <laughs> <laughs>